Hello everyone and welcome to Act 17 Apologetics first YouTube video aside from the debates that is. What we've decided to do is to respond to questions that people have been sending us via email and instead of actually responding to them individually we're going to respond to them by actually posting videos online. This is going to be supplementary to the text blogs that we already do on AnsweringMuslims.com. So recently I had a debate with Osama Abdullah on the question of is the Quran miraculous? In that debate I brought up the concept of scientific miracles. What most Muslims argue when they use the argument from scientific miracles is that the Quran is so miraculous in its scientific statements that it must have been from God for no man from the 7th century could have known these things. Well, I have to investigate these claims, and the first thing I look at is statements which do not seem to be miraculously accurate, in fact seem to be inaccurate and miraculous only in the sense that someone would actually believe it. In the Quran, chapter 86, verses 6 through 7, we have the statement about sperm coming from a man's backbone and ribs. The statement reads, and I'll read the Arabic first, Khulika mimma in dafik. And the translation of this uh, from Shakir is, He is created from water pouring forth, coming from between the back and the ribs. The Yusuf Ali translation reads, He is created from a drop emitted, proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs. So the statement that we have here is that sperm or semen or whatever it is that is a fluid which gushes forth, from the backbone and the ribs, that is what creates a human. My response is there's absolutely nothing that gushes forth from between the backbones and the ribs that creates the human. At least not in any direct sense. If you're going to have any sort of response to this which justifies these verses of the Quran, you have to do some crazy textual acrobatics in order to make it work, thereby ignoring the clear statement of the Quran. Now one person in particular has been sending me many, many emails um, demanding responses to his textual acrobatics. His response to my accusations in this debate was along the following. He says, Taraib is plural and Tariba is singular. Taraib is feminine and has to be understood to mean the rib area. And he also says that Sulb is masculine and can mean loins or backbone slash spinal column. Since sub is masculine and taraib is feminine, then what is actually being said is this, and I'm quoting from him, mankind is created from gushing water that proceeds from between a man's loins and a female's rib area. In other words, it takes two, a male and a female, to create a human being in the normal way unless one is Prophet Jesus or Prophet Adam. That is the definition provided by uh, this person who has been emailing me. What I have to say is, this is not at all the words of the Qur'an. What the words of the Qur'an say, again, I'm going to give Shakir's translation, someone who I trust much more than some random person who's emailing me when it comes to translation of the Qur'an, is, he is created of water pouring forth, coming from between the back and the ribs. Again, Yusuf Ali, he is created from a drop emitted, proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs. So the translation speaks for itself. When people have to do these acrobatics and say, well, this word is masculine and this word is feminine, therefore it means that babies come from a man and a woman, number one, I'd have to say that all you're doing is trying to make something which does not say what you want it to say into something which is an obvious statement, not a scientifically miraculous statement, in order to somewhat defend the Qur'an. And this is not what any objective, biased, non-biased person would do when approaching this verse. A non-biased person would say, what does the verse say? Let it speak for itself. The verse says, there is a fluid gushing forth from between a man's ribs and backbone which produces a baby. Uh, this is not at all accurate. Secondly, this defense is really trying to circumvent uh, what is being obviously stated. Don't forget verse 6. Verse 6 says, He is created of water pouring forth, or He is created from a drop emitted. So, if there is, uh, if we're going to accept the definition presented by this man who, who has emailed me, um, he says that it's talking about between a man and a woman. Well, what is the fluid that gushes forth between a man and a woman? 
There is no fluid that automatically springs forth between a man and a woman. The fluid that springs forth is within an individual person. And that fluid, again, would fit according to the obvious translation that it is within a man's ribs and backbones. And this is just a scientifically inaccurate statement. We have lots of claims from other people um, trying to defend the statement. Dr. Maurice Busai tries to defend it by saying that it's, um, it's actually saying it issued as a result of the conjunction of the sexual area of the man and the sexual area of the woman. Dr. Zakir Naik tries to defend it by saying that in the embryonic stages, the reproductive organs of the male and female, i.e. the testicles and the ovaries, begin their descent near the kidney between the spinal column and the 11th and 12th ribs. And therefore, it's the embryonic stage that, that God is talking about in the Quran. Uh, Jamal Badawi says um, that there is a fluid gushing and poured forth, which refers to the aorta. And the aorta, of course, supplies um, the testes and the ovaries, and therefore, that is what God is talking about. All these different attempts to uh, defend what the Quran is saying really ignores the wording of the Quran. It tries to do some acrobatics in order to defend what the Quran is saying. I have to emphasize the fact that if you are going to do this with verses in the Quran, you could defend just about anything. You could defend for example, the statement from an ancient Greek philosopher that everything is made out of water by saying, oh, well, hydrogen and oxygen are the main components of water, and since hydrogen is a proton and an electron, and everything is made out of protons and electrons, then this statement is correct. This is called acrobatics, or trying to defend something uh, that really is not being stated. Eisegesis is another term for it, when you read something into the text that simply is not there. This is not something that we're supposed to do when we're reading a text. We're supposed to be honest. We're supposed to come forward and read what is actually being said and translate it appropriately. So, in summary, if the Quran is miraculous in its scientific statements, it needs to be miraculous in the scientific statements that are made very clearly and not just in wild interpretations and fanciful reconstructions of the text. When the clear statements are read, and they are assessed, they tend to be flawed over and over and over again. In this case, we've seen very clearly how we know they are flawed with um, sperm or semen coming forth from between the backbones and the ribs. We'll see in future installments that there are other verses of the Quran when interpreted at face value, say things that are extremely scientifically inaccurate. Thank you very much for listening to this first YouTube video from Act 17 Apologetics. God bless you all.